We're celebrating the history and culture of Kelly's Island and meeting residents like artist Charles Herndon. Do you go by Chuck or Charles? Depends on who's talking to me. <laughs> well, what can I call you? Chuck is fine. Chuck, uh, thanks for having us out. This is a beautiful place. It's very tranquil and peaceful. Uh, how long have you had this, you know, sculpture garden here? We decided um, around 1998 or so to start to do this a little more seriously. For a long time, I was teaching in Columbus, 34 years. And uh, we had a big place there and sculpture was everywhere. And uh, we thought it'd be nicer to bring it here. What are we looking at when we walk around here then? Because I'm seeing a variety of things like the red mangled metal, is that kind of a theme? That was a theme for when I was uh, a mangler, which is when I was a lot younger. <laughs> but the steel pieces have to do more with energy uh, and time. That one right over there is called a parallel arrangement where I forged pieces that were uh, relatively the same and then I, then I placed them next to each other for comparison. Mm -hmm. With experience comes new visions and paths for creation. An artist for more than 60 years, Herndon's work represents the evolution of his talents. I went to graduate school in sculpture. And so for a time there, I didn't do anything but sculpture. And, and then I started doing a painting here, a painting there. In fact, one of the paintings in the gallery, I started in uh, 1970 or so, oh, wow. and finished it uh, maybe 10 years ago. It's called New Beginnings. Is there a reason behind, like the length of a project? Well, one, I started it, and I kind of liked it, but I didn't really like it. And uh, I had it in my sculpture studio in the back, mm -hmm. and I've been work on it again. And it, it, it developed layer by layer by layer, and uh, it got to the point where I, I love it. The stones that you use around here, are those from uh, Kelly's Island? They're all from the, the beach. Mm -hmm. Although, I, I guess if I were to dig around here, I'd find a few too. Sure. They, they've been brought here by the, the glaciers, and uh, they're all carved out of the Canadian Shield and then brought down here. And they're the agents within the ice that cut the grooves. How long does it take to, to work on something like that? And the well, months sometimes. It depends on the complexity of the form, the hardness of the rock. What do you hope the public sees and feels when they come out here and check out your gallery and your sculptures? I, I hope what happens is what does happen to some of them that they, they find a peaceful place that they can kind of connect with nature and connect with the stones and the art that are here. A staple of any good visit to Kelly's Island is a winery trip. The newest of two wineries on the island, Crooked Tree Vineyard, sits on the gorgeous Lakeshore Drive and is a product of the hard work of husband and wife team, Steve and Janet Wormuth. So Janet, we're in the vineyards now at Crooked Tree. Uh, this is really cool. Do you do tours out here like this? Um, when we're open in the summertime and during the season, we allow people to come and wander out here if they want to. And then if they have questions, we'll stop and hang out and answer their questions. But it's, it's open, so people will get glasses of wine and just wander through the vineyard. You can just come right out and see the Crooked Tree, which we're actually on our way to right now. But um, if you want to stop and look at, at some of this, so this is one of the, the vines, right? Yeah, this is a Chamberson grape. So this grape grows up and then it'll canopy down and then the Cabernet Franc grapes we cord on along here and they grow up. But like this has been pruned one time, but now what I'll start to do is come through and pull these leaves off because you don't want any leaves on the trunk. You want it all coming down. So we want all the energy to go up there. So we actually come out and we prune them down to where you usually want to have like five buds on them. So like I just kind of eyeball it, I don't actually count. And then you just clip stuff off and throw it to the ground and then this will be our growing area. Um, and then if you look really close here, you can see this little cluster. The next step is that'll actually turn into a little white flower and then that's, that's a grape cluster. And then these white nets are bird nets. And so once the grapes are, once the sugar level, we call it the bricks, get to about 16, 17, we'll actually pull these nets down and they connect down at the bottom 
and then that keeps the birds off of them. It also helps with the raccoons. Also helping to keep the raccoons away is the Wormuth's dog, Happy. One time he was chasing a squirrel through the vineyard and uh, between the squirrel and Happy, they knocked a couple vines off the cordons, but we were able to fix it. Happy out, he's a leaner, out, yeah, good boy. <laughs> he's a leaner and a cuddler too, I assume. Right, and uh, there he goes again, okay. So each one of these <laughs> makes it, it makes it like, okay, to, to my right, what kind of wine would come from these grapes? So the Cab Franc grapes, which are the ones that cordon across the bottom, them and then up. Those are the ones that are for our Cab Franc, which is our driest red. We also make a really nice rosé out of that. Mm -hmm. There's another wine that's a sweet red that's called Four Sisters, and that's named after my sisters, because right. um, they don't like dry red. So we make the Cabernet Franc wine, and then I make grape juice out of the grapes, so it's actually sweetened with grape juice rather than with simple syrup. So when we bought the property, it was completely wooded, um, like the scrub trees you see around by the cow pasture and stuff. And so my husband Steve literally cleared the property himself. And, uh, and as he was clearing it, I spotted this tree and I'm like, don't cut down that crooked tree. Um, <laughs> And so we've, we've kept this tree. The vines do not grow very well under here, but it became our, our hallmark. And then hanging from the crooked tree is this wind chime, and I'll get teary-eyed, because um, my sister, who passed away from cancer, actually bought me that. Mm. And so um, Steve hung it there as a surprise to me. We took it from our house in Columbus. And so now when we hear the wind chime, we think about my sister and his dad and my dad. And, everybody we've lost. Good way to keep that presence here yeah. and, and keep that family yeah. you know, involved as, as yeah. part of the process as you yeah. continue to grow here. Yeah. Inside, Steve prepped a wine flight for us. First of all, what's it like owning a vineyard here on Kelly's Island with your wife? Oh, it, this has been our dream. Uh, we love doing it. Um, it's a labor of love. I tell folks when they walk out there and they see the vineyard and what we've done, 80% of it Janet and I have done um, together. So. Um, it's definitely been our dream and we are living it every day. What should I go to next? Go to the Raccoon Red. Raccoon Red, which is right here. Yep. So the Raccoon Red is 80% of the Cab Franc and 20% of the Chamberson grape. The Chamberson grapes is still a dry red, but it's more fruit forward. So when you blend it with that Cab Franc, you get this, you taste the fruit on the front end yep. and then you taste the dry Cab Franc on the back end. Definitely getting that in there. One of my favorite things about going to vineyards, um, wineries, is the knowledge that we get that you're putting on me right now and that uh, Janet gave when we were walking through the vineyards. Is this something when people come out, you know, tourists come to the island that they can expect to talk with you and, and share, you know, your wisdom? Yeah, we, I think that's one of the things with Janet and I running the tasting room when we, when we were open. Um, people like talking to the owners. They like hearing our story, um, asking us questions about the vineyard. and. And when we are, when the tasting room is open over the summer and everything, we leave the, the vineyard open. We say, if you want to go out there and walk around, actually I tease them and tell them there's a set of pruners out there that they can help us with. But, but yeah, we let people you know, have that experience um, and they seem to really enjoy it. And I couldn't have enjoyed my visit more. We wrap this trip with a special shout out to the One Tank Travel crew for capturing a memorable day on Kelly's Island.